boys and girls, it's Pastor Houston here, and welcome to another time of Kids Town Live. You know, we're going through this series called Dollars and Cents. You know, and last week we talked about making God first and giving Him our best. Well, this week we're going to hear from the story of Moses building the sanctuary and learn that God wants us to give generously. It's a wonderful thing when God blesses us and we find ourselves in a place where we are living in the gifts that he has provided. God does not bless us in order for us to be greedy and keep everything to ourselves. God blesses us in order for us to be a blessing to others. So let's start out our time this morning with some worship. Are you ready? Everybody on your feet, let's get ready to move. Here we go. Welcome back to this series, Dollars and Cents. We've already learned some pretty important principles, haven't we? We learned that God is the source of everything that we need. He's the one we should look to to provide for our needs. After all, He owns everything. We also learned how important it is to be obedient when it comes to tithe. You know what tithe is, right? That's right. It's the first 10% of the money we earn. We have to give that to God in obedience. That makes good sense, right? Today, we're learning another important principle, generosity. It's not something that comes naturally to us. I mean, think about your little brother or sister. One of the first words they learned was, Mine! Mine! <laughs> Mine! 
Yeah, we really like our stuff and we want to keep it, all of it. But that's not the attitude God wants us to have. He wants us to give generously. Instead of letting greed take over our lives, we must develop generosity. In your lesson today, you're gonna to learn all about how when you choose to give to God generously, amazing things happen. It's gonna be awesome. I better let you go so you can learn all about Moses and the Israelites and what happened when they practiced generosity. Until next time, this is Sophia. I pray that you continue to have good sense. Bye. What you gotta know, what you gotta know, time for Boudreaux, what you gotta know, what you gotta know. Hey there kids, it's me, Boudreaux. That's pronounced Boudreaux. And I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're learning all about giving to God and to others. So every time today that somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. God wants us to be generous. Well, that's great, because the other day, I found a whole wad of old rusty pocket lint I didn't want, and I gave it in the offering as it went by. Ain't that just so generous? No, that ain't generous. That's giving away something you don't even want. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? I gave something, didn't I? Well, I suppose so. But we have to give above and beyond. We got to get rid of the greed and give so that God gets the glory. So every time today that somebody asks you what you got to know, you tell them. God wants us to be generous. And that right there, kids, is what you got to know. Well, I'm Boudreaux from the Bayou saying bye-bye, you.
Hi boys and girls, I'm Walter, the mayor of Kidstown. Are you ready for this week's Bible story? Today's Bible story is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 35. It's a story about one of the greatest leaders of God's people. His name was Moses. Now God's people, the Israelites, had been wandering in the wilderness for years after escaping Egypt. They were on their way to the promised land, but the journey seemed to last forever. Moses had just brought down the Ten Commandments, which were God's instructions for his people. Now, Moses had some new instructions and opportunity for the people who were lost and living in the desert. It was an opportunity to be generous. Moses stood before the people and announced, we are going to build a sanctuary for the Lord our God. A sanctuary was a building dedicated to worship. Moses told them that they would build a tabernacle for the Lord and would pay for it by taking an offering. He said, bring your gold and silver and bronze. Bring your fine cloth and your best building materials. If you've got jewelry and gemstones, bring that as well. The entire nation of Israel was inspired to be generous. All the women began to use their spinning wheels to make beautiful purple cloths to be used to decorate the sanctuary. People went through all of their possessions and brought gold, silver, jewels, and more. The best thing about it, they were happy to do it. Moses didn't have to force them to give. He just gave them the opportunity and they took it. In fact, the people gave so much that Moses had to stop them. He made a big announcement. Men, women, no more offerings for the building of the sanctuary. The people were ordered to stop bringing offerings. There was plenty of material for all the work to be done, more than enough. Can you imagine? There was such a spirit of generosity, Moses had to literally command the people not to give anymore. In today's lesson, you will learn all about the importance of generosity, being willing to give to God and to others. It's the opposite of greed. That's what we're going to learn today. Exercises. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. My name is Vaughn. And my name is Glenn. And we are here to pop you up. up. Yeah. yeah. Glenn and I are power lift up. Oh, yeah. We raise the roof. Oh, the only thing stronger than our muscles is our sense of humor. Oh, sometimes. sometimes. But you know what we need to hear? We need to hear today's knock knock joke. Knock knock joke? Yeah, I got the knock knock joke. Do you have another one? I do. Knock knock. Who's that? Banana. Banana who? Bananas are great, but the powder verse is better. Ah yeah, ah yeah, ah yeah. What? That was not a joke. You've been eating too many cheese puffs. I'm sorry, I liked it anyway. Here's today's powder verse. Yeah. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Second Corinthians 9, 6. Oh, that was a powerful part of us. Yeah. But you know what we need, Glenn? What? We need the boys and the girls to stand up yeah. and say yeah. the part of us with us. Yeah, yeah, but we have to do it powerfully. Ah. So the most powerful exercise is head rolls. So everyone, get your head and do this. Uh, and say the power verse with me in my uh, browser on the count of three. One, uh, two, uh, three. Uh, Remember uh, this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Second Corinthians 9, 6. Oh, yeah. that was a very powerful part of us. You may all sit down. Yeah, good job. Well, listen, my brother. Yeah. It is time for us to go. Oh, but until next time, yeah. when we teach you another powerful part of us. Yeah. My name is Vern. My name is Glenn. We're here to pop you up. Yeah.
Kiki do what you gotta know. Hi boys and girls, it's Pastor Houston here, and let's talk about today's Bible story. In this series so far, we've learned some important principles about how to have good sense when it comes to our money. Well, we certainly learned about the importance of seeing God as our source and being obedient in our giving of the tithe to God. But as important as it is to be obedient to God in giving our tithe, that's not where you want to stop. See, I brought something along to help illustrate this today. Do you know what that is right there? Yeah, that's called a tee. It's used by young boys and girls who are starting to play baseball. It helps them hit the ball better because it's not moving around. It just sits right there on the tee. You see, this tee represents our obeying God in giving the tithe. It's a place where we can start in our giving to God. But is the tithe where we should stop? No. Can you imagine if a major league baseball player walked up to the plate and put one of these tees down and said, hold on pitcher, I need to get my tee ready so I can hit the ball. Of course not. Major league players would never think about doing something like that. I mean, they hit 90 mile per hour fastballs thrown by a pitcher not a ball off of a tee. How did they go from, from using a tee to having a pitcher throw a 90 mile per hour fastball at them? Well, they start with the tee, but then they move up to a pitching machine, and then a coach would be throwing at them, and then a kid would be throwing, and then eventually a, a, a high school player, and then, then a college player, and then a, a minor league pitcher, and then finally they work their way up to a major league pitcher throwing 90 mile per hour fastballs. They started with the T and worked their way up. It's the same way with you and me. We should start with trusting God as our source and by obeying Him with the tithe, but then we need to move to the next level. You know what that next level is? Generosity. Generosity comes when you take the next step beyond obedience. See, if you're faithfully giving your tithe, that's giving your first 10% of your money that you receive, well, that's obedience. That's what God's called us to do. But then you go beyond the tithe and you give a little bit each week to like maybe missions. You know, that's generosity. When you give money to help build a school in China, that's generosity. We have good sense by starting with the tithe, but not stopping there. We don't want to just give what God requires us to give. We want to give even more than that. So while you're still a kid, you start with your tithe, no matter what. Every time you receive money, you take 10% out and you say, this is for God. I'm going to give this to God. Then as you get older, you start to give the tithe and a little more. And then you give a, a tithe and a little bit more and then a little bit more. You see, each time you keep stretching yourself to give more and more as you get older and older. There are many people who struggle with being generous. Do you know why? It's because of a little thing called greed. A person who struggles with being generous is called greedy. Right there. That's greedy. Now, a greedy person is a person who lives their life trying to get as much stuff as they can and keeping it all for themselves. A greedy person doesn't like to share and doesn't like to give to other people. It's like if I had this big bag of candy and I didn't want to give anybody to anybody else. I just wanted to keep it all for myself. That's the way a greedy person thinks. They don't want to share or give their possessions to other people. They don't want to help other people by giving their money or helping the church or other people in need. They are greedy. You see, the greedy person will always say, this is mine. They want to keep everything to themselves. 
But there's a better way to live than being greedy. That better way is called being generous. You see, where a generous person realizes that everything they have is a gift from God. They don't try to get as much money and possessions so that they can keep it for themselves. They give freely of what they have to other people and to God. Why? Well, because when a greedy person says, this is mine, a generous person says, this is God's. And they want to give as much of the stuff away as they can. God wants us to break out of the greed mindset and become generous. You know why? The generous person uses the gifts God has given them to help build others up and to help others around them and to build the kingdom of God. Remember what happened with Moses and the Israelites in our story today? Their generosity was a blessing to God. God received glory as they allowed generosity to fill their hearts. So let's give generously. Let's give more than just the, the tithe that God wants, but let's find ways to be generous. Let's share our toys. Let's share the things that we have and learn to be generous so that God gets the glory. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for being a loving God, for being a generous God to us. You give us so much. Lord, help us remember that it's not our stuff. It all belongs to you, God. You've just given it to us so that we can give it to others. Help us not be greedy. Help us understand, Lord, that you want us to share all the blessings that you give to us so that others around us can be blessed as well. And Lord, help us be generous in all that we do. And we know that you will be glorified and honored through our generosity and that we will be blessed as well. We thank you for all this, Lord, in your son's name, who was the ultimate gift of generosity. It's in his name we pray. Amen.
Hi, boys and girls. Guess what time it is? It's time to rewind. Re rewind that brain of yours to see what you remembered from our lessons today. First question, what you gotta know? What you gotta know today? I will give generously, take my money, or God wants us to be generous. Which one? What you gotta know today? The answer is God wants us to be generous. That's right. Question number two. What leader did we learn about in our Bible study today? Or Bible story today? Was it Michael? Was it Moses? Or was it Kevin? Well, the answer, of course, was Moses. Let's move on to question three. What did Moses tell the people that they were going to build? A sanctuary, a tractor, or Taco Bell? Cheesy Gordia Crunches, I love those. But the answer actually was a sanctuary. Very cool. Question number four, did the people fuss and argue about having to give to the sanctuary project? Were they upset about having to give to it? Do you remember? Well, the answer was no. They did it generously, they were excited. True or false? Moses had to beg the people to give more. Do you remember? Did he have to beg them? No, they did not. Again, they were so excited about it, they gave more than they needed to give. So question number six, according to our lesson today, sacrifice equals going above and beyond obedience, or generosity equals going above and beyond obedience, or saving equals going above and beyond obedience. Do you remember which one that was, according to our lesson today? Well, the answer is generosity equals going above and beyond obedience. We're moving on to question seven. According to our lesson today, sin gets in the way of our generosity, greed gets in the way of our generosity, or Satan gets in the way of our generosity. Which one is it? Well, the answer for question seven is greed gets in the way of our generosity. Question number eight, according to our lesson today, when I am generous, God gets the glory? When I'm generous, mom gets the glory? Or when I'm generous, money gets the glory? That seems like a pretty easy one. I bet you guys all answered. When I am generous, God gets the glory. That's fantastic. Number nine, should we desire to move beyond obedience to generosity? Should we desire to move beyond obedience to generosity? It's a yes or no question, do you remember? Well, the answer is yes, we should desire to move beyond. Now, question number 10, finally, where was our power verse found? 2 Corinthians 9, 6, Proverbs 4, 9, or Philippians 6, 19. Well, the power verse was found in 2 Corinthians 9, 6. That was our 10 questions for Rewind. I'm sure you guys did and gals did a wonderful job. We'll see you next week. Boys and girls, what a wonderful lesson this week. God has given us so much. He is an awesome God. Let's give back. Let's give back to him. Let's give back to the church. Let's give back to others. Be generous with what you have. And that is awesome. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to be generous. Help us to help others. Help us to be reminded how much you love us and how much you've given us. So we pray these things in your son's name and we are so thankful for your generosity. Amen. So remember, boys and girls, rejoice always. Pray continually and give thanks. But this is God's purpose for you in Christ Jesus. We'll see you next week.